Calculate the lattice energy of magnesium sulfide from the data given below. So, lattice energy is going to be the energy released when magnesium cations and sulfur anions in the gaseous form come together to form solid magnesium sulfide, an ionic compound. Lattice energy could also be the reverse process, which is the energy um, required to break apart this ionic solid into its component gaseous molecules. But we're going to look at the other way today because that's what's been given. And what the strategy I'm going to take is I'm going to try and analyze these things piece by piece, see how magnesium in the gaseous form, rather a magnesium cation in the gaseous form, try and follow that track all the way through to the desired product. And stick around, I'll try and show you what that means. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at magnesium 2 plus gas and see where it appears here in this data table. Right there. It appears right there, but it's on the reactant side. If I want to follow the track through as it becomes magnesium sulfide, I'm going to need to think about the reverse of this equation for starters. So I'm going to try and flip this so I can get magnesium 2 plus gas on the reactant side. And I'm going to write down the new versions of my equations over here to help me keep track of things. We're going to have magnesium 2 plus gas plus 2 electrons becomes magnesium gas. And of course the important thing about this problem is that if the delta H for this process was positive 2186 when it was going this way, the delta H for the same process but in reverse will be negative 2186. Now let's think about our strategy here. I want to follow this magnesium track. We've, we've examined the magnesium cation as it becomes magnesium gas. Um, now I want to think about what magnesium gas becomes. Magnesium gas appears here. Well, let me cross this out so I don't get confused and try and use it again. But magnesium gas appears right here, but again, it's on the wrong side. I want to think about what it becomes and then what that product becomes all the way until we get to magnesium sulfide. So I'm going to take this process here and flip it. Magnesium gas becomes magnesium solid. And just like last time, the delta H for that is going to be slightly different now. Positive 148 kilojoules per mole going this way. So negative 148 kilojoules per mole going the other way. Now let's think about where magnesium solid appears. Let's cross this out. Magnesium solid appears here, right here. On the right side, and in fact probably in the last step because there are magnesium sulfides on the, on the reactant side. That's definitely what I'm looking for, but there's too many of them here too many magnesium solids and too many magnesium sulfides. I want to use the general form of this last equation here, but I don't want eight of them. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this equation by eight. And that'll get me something that looks like magnesium solid plus one eighth of an S8 becomes one magnesium sulfide solid. And the delta H for that, well, if it's negative 2744, it's going to have to be an eighth of that now, but still negative because we didn't change the direction. So negative 343 kilojoules per mole. And that actually takes care of, that actually takes care of the magnesium track. Now we'll try and think about this sulfur track and we'll use a different color to help us think about, think about that. We have sulfur 2 minus gas. Where does the sulfur 2 minus anion appear? It appears here. Once again on the wrong side. Right amount but on the wrong side. So I'm going to take this equation I'm going to flip it. S2 minus gas will become sulfur gas plus 2e minus, and the delta H for that, if it's positive going this way, positive 450, it will be negative 450 kilojoules per mole. So we've used that equation. 
Now let's try and find sulfur gas. Where does that appear? That appears right here. Not only is it on the wrong side, but there's also too much of it. So I need to take this equation, flip it, but then divide it by 8. And if I do that process, I'll have 1 sulfur gas becoming 1 eighth of an S8 molecule in the solid form. The delta H for that, well, it'll be negative of this number divided by 8. So I get for that negative 279 kilojoules per mole. Finally, and now we're getting to something I kind of had in the back of my head, which is why I didn't actually cross this out. Didn't cross it out because now I have to take this 1 eighth of an S8 molecule. And if you think about it, we have already done this. So the 1 eighth of an S8 molecule appears right here. Wouldn't have mattered which one of these we got first, but this is the final step here. And now all we have to do, since we've taken care of each and every process, is add these numbers together. And it turns out that when you add these numbers together, you will get a result of negative 3406, 3406 kilojoules per mole for your delta H, your enthalpy of formation.